Phil Dobby and this is the Vantage Performance Podcast and it's the second in our four-part series looking at how your business can do well in the face of adversity. Now, if your business is going to succeed and ride the ebbs and flows of the economy, you need a sound strategy. Now, you might have one in the back of your head. You might even have written some of it down. But is it rigid enough to guide your business successfully into the future? Well, let's find out with the help of Michael Finglan, the CEO of Vantage Performance. Now, we've looked at the rudimentaries last week, Michael. You know, ensure that you've got that one-page management dashboard on a sheet of A3 paper, I seem to remember. Uh, You've got the three-year integrated forecast. You've got the 13-week cash flow. And most importantly, you've got an open mind, a willingness to accept change. So uh, with that open mind, let's look at the strategy. I mean, I guess, first of all, you look at your issues and risks in your business. Have you got those out of the way, first of all? Yeah, definitely. And uh, good morning, Phil. Yeah, the the other sort of critical thing to, to also have in place, uh, which a lot of businesses don't, is a is an A3 again. You know, we love our A3s. An A3 strategic plan, <laughs> right. uh, which is a... Uh, more of a 12-month uh, sort of business plan, but but de- drilling down into uh, a lot of the, the strategies, goals, and outcomes you're looking to achieve. So, and that's something you also look at each month along with the management pack and uh, the three ways and, and the 13 week cash flows. But uh, certainly in relation to the way we approach stress testing and, and getting businesses prepared or uh, for any potential shock, or if they're in if they're in that process of uh, dealing with significant change, there's always a, a three three key areas that we, we focus on, which is strategy, capital, people, and uh, you know, strategy certainly all we'll focus on today. And you know, the, the critical thing is to understand that the really big issues. You know, the, there might be a whole range of issues impacting on the business, but you need to distill uh, into the top one, two, three, four, maybe five key issues that you're dealing with, and make sure that uh, using the, the the usual 80/20 rule, make sure that uh, you're spending the majority of your management time and focus on dealing with those large issues, right. uh, because typically. Uh, and and, and you know, this has been proven time and time again and is fundamental to our approach is when you're dealing with a business in crisis or, or significant change, there's always one to two big changes in strategy that you need to make uh, to right, right the business. And so once you've identified those you know, major key issues that uh, you've got to deal with, it's what are those one to two uh, changes in direction uh, or, or fundamental changes in strategy are we prepared to, uh, to enact um, to... Uh, you know, change the course. And the difference between an issue and a risk, I guess, is an issue, you, you've got to put issues right, whereas risks, mm. you just need to know how big they are and you're making a calculated decision. Because obviously a, a business is, is all about risk-taking. There's always an element of risk in everything you do. You've just got to make sure you've got a, a clear understanding of uh, the extent of that risk. That's right. And, and the fundamentals around risks are which risks are you presently or which risks have become issues? So are they actually on your doorstep? Which ones are near term, long term, and what is the potential financial impact of those? And then you you rate them accordingly using a typical uh, you know, score sheet. And uh, it's really focusing on the major risks that can impact on the business in the uh, in the near term, you know, in three to six to twelve months, and then developing strategies to to mitigate those. And uh, whether they be industry, uh, uh, internal, uh, or, or uh, regulatory. Right, and some of them perhaps aren't solvable. Some of them you just have to accept. If you're going to go in a certain direction, mm. uh, moving in that direction has a risk associated with it. You just, you've just got to, you just got to accept that as part of doing business, I would have thought. That's right. And, uh, and one of the fundamentals, you know, when it comes to strategies, we, we, with every client, no matter what stage or cycle they're in, you know, turnaround, high growth, succession, etc., is a constant focus on, and this is where that strategy plan comes in, how, how are we going to stand out from the crowd? Yeah. Uh, and developing or unearthing your USP is a fundamental part of that because um, you know, whether it's trying to access capital, you know, debt or equity, um, you know, there are a lot of companies out there that look very, very similar. And uh, you know, more and more, you know, it's, it's harder to, to, to tap into those uh, two forms of funding and, uh, and you need to have a strategy that... Uh, you know, uh, really tangibly uh, helps you stand out from the crowd. So, is it all about just the uh, the USP, that unique selling point, to stand out from the crowd? I mean, I would have thought there'd be other. You know, it might be a number of variables. You might have something which makes your product different, but there's also differences in the way your company behaves, for example. Oh, it's it's a whole range of things, and uh, it all needs to be uh, integrated throughout the entire business. So, it's everything from the way your your uh, staff from 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 initial phone contact with a potential outside party, uh, deals with the customer all the way through to how products are packaged, um, how visibly they look different to, to someone else, the time, care and attention taken uh, through the production phase so you don't have uh, returns uh, come back to the, to the business, 
uh, how you manage your, your payments with your suppliers, it, it is all integrated. And those firms that really get that, you know, um, uh, uh, you know USP or unique selling point and uh, and a, a real focus on their brand and, and their culture, yeah. uh, those that really get how that flows through the entire organisation are those that really go on from strength to strength. So it is incredibly important that you get that right and that it cascades through all, all parts of the business. Now, the useful tool for pulling all of the things that we've been talking about together so far, you know, sort of like mm. the, the issues that your business might face uh, and, uh, and, you know, how you're going to stand out from the crowd. It's funny, isn't it, how management tools, some of them just, you know, have stood the test of time, but bringing in that uh, SWOT analysis, that strength, mm. weakness, opportunity, threats analysis, yep. uh, that's a good way of pulling all of this together. Oh, it is, and, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the best management tools ever, ever created because it really forces you to be honest and brutal yeah. uh, and, uh, and really identify where you need to be focusing. And that's what business is all about, having a quarterly focus on a key area of the business. So regularly understanding your SWOT uh, just helps make those things uh, top of mind. And they're an internal focus and external focus. That's the good thing as well. You know, the strength mm-hmm. and weaknesses are internal. The opportunities and threats are, are, are really to do with the market you're operating in. So it, it, it forces you to take that holistic approach, which is sometimes hard for a business because they become so uh, internally focused. That's right. And when it comes to, to you know, keeping your stakeholders you know, supportive of the business, that being they, your, your banker, your shareholders, uh, you know, creditors, etc., you... Uh, need to ensure that uh, you really have uh, a good grasp on all the issues and, and you've got initiatives to deal with any any issues you may be facing. So regularly doing the SWOT is a key way of demonstrating that. Regularly updating that strap plan is, is a key part of that. And uh, and having a, a really robust stakeholder management plan is, is a key part of any strategy that any management team needs to ensure. So you've got to have, that's one of our guiding principles on, on the strategy topic, is you've got to have a documented and well-practiced you know, stakeholder management plan uh, and uh, you're regularly talking to those key stakeholders. Mm. So out of your SWOT analysis, um, I guess one of you know you you understand now where you've got a, an opportunity to grow. The, the natural mm. thing then to do is is to look at what you what you are doing and what you're selling your product range, mm. uh, how well it's doing. Can you expand it in any way? Are there some products that uh, that that just you know aren't relevant anymore? That, that they're all hard questions you have to ask yourself. Yeah, and every at least sort of quarterly, if not uh, every six months, looking at you know gross product um, percentage or margin percent by product by customer by service yeah. critical because uh, you know a lot of businesses that grow quickly expand into far too many product ranges and uh, and uh, without a real understanding of whether they're making money or not and and you know 12 months down the track uh, they're losing money uh, and and don't really know where so it's fundamental that that is a regular part of any management team uh, process is to regularly review products and and, uh, and margins uh, but but critically, particularly with regards to products, and this is a key fundamental tool in any uh, economy where there's uh, a downturn or dis- dislocation, is a continued spend on R&D. Yeah. It, time and time again, it's been proven that those companies that continue to spend money on R&D and marketing and don't slash those heavily are those that actually come through in a much stronger fashion and will take market share. And yet, you know, a lot of businesses would be saying, well, look, you know, we don't need R&D right now because our business is, uh, is doing quite well. The products we're selling are, are giving us a good, uh, a, a good margin. Uh, we'd, you know, why invest that, um, that money now uh, when clearly we've got a product, you know, for, for these times? Yeah, it all comes back to a really big problem in, in, in our, I guess, business community is short-termism, mm. whether it's a listed company or whatever. But, you know, marketing costs, they're the easiest to cut. Because you can you can cut them off straight away, and that and that's the short term thinking that a lot of management teams take, rather than the the medium to long term, which is, um, you know, do we want to come out through this challenging period still discounting an old product, or how about we're actually coming out to the market with a brand new product that people will pay more money for? Yeah. And and that that courage and the commitment to stay in the course is why those companies that continue to focus on R and D and marketing. Uh, maybe not at the same rate, but just don't slash it as much as others. They are the ones that come through in a much stronger fashion because you can retain margin when, you, when, you, when you're releasing new products and services to the market, whereas the rest of the pack are still slashing each other's throats with old products, discounting their way through. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, you just got to keep on remembering that uh, that graph of the life cycle, haven't you, and, and yeah. of, of a product and uh, and thinking you don't want to be on the uh, on the downside of that curve when you could be on, on the upside, is what you're saying, of, yeah. of your next product. And, and that all comes back to, again, the same theory of how do you stand out from the crowd? Well, we're going to continue spending money on R&D and, and, and releasing new products on a regular basis to the market because everyone else isn't. Right. And uh, so it's as fundamental as that. 
Okay, gaining critical mass for your business. Now, that might mm. be uh, an issue for, for, for many. Um, I think this is a familiar scenario, in fact. Uh, and you, you often see two companies, uh, fairly small companies, having difficulty taking on the competition. So they say, well, hell, let's join together and give them a run for their money. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's uh, one, one way that it, it's often approached. And uh, uh, the other one, which we'll talk about now, is and this is, I think, going to be a seriously um, needed tool, um, particularly in that mid-market SME space, you know, up to sort of 100 million turnover, maybe a bit more, but uh, over the next two years, is, is those companies who can cut costs so far, but they don't have room to cut costs even further with their declining revenues. So the only way they're going to be able to survive will be to merge with their competitors, uh, either in their same field or, or um, you know, slightly... Uh, you know, more further afield. So a merger of two uh, is going to be a, a much needed um, or certainly need to be considered strategy for a lot of businesses to survive over the next 12, 18 months. It's got to be fairly well considered though, hasn't it? Particularly if you're looking at, at moving into a different area. That has got to be, I mean, that's a strategic decision, not just for pure financial reasons. We, you're yeah. then getting back to the, your product strategy as well. Yeah, and it shouldn't be just for survival, although a lot of them will, will uh, need to merge just for survival purposes. But you know, mergers, a lot of mergers don't go well, and the, and the fundamental key area that they get wrong is, is the cultural uh, integration between the two organisations, the, the staff uh, piece. And uh, so, but if you've got a strong focus on, you know, the synergies are there, they make sense, financially it works, uh, the financing is in place, and, and a lot of the costs will, will, will drop away and, and make the, the, the business or the combined group, you know, much more uh, viable and... Uh, and uh, and sustainable, yeah. uh, but there has to be a, a almost a, a relentless focus on how to ensure that the people issues are integrated well, and not just at the time of transaction, but for uh, 12, 18 months, 24 months afterwards, a continued focus and a, and a distinct strategy on people integration to ensure that those synergies actually become real. Yeah. Now, you might not be forced to do it because, uh, you know, because things are going well for you, but they might not be going so well for the for the other party, for the company mm. that, that you're you're buying. I mean, and that, that then becomes an opportunity. If you're well prepared for it, you've yep. got a competitor who's in stress, um, then, uh, then, you know, a real opportunity for your business to grow. Yeah, and that's why we're doing price. a lot of work. In, yeah, absolutely, and that's why we're doing a lot of work in this space because um, you know, the smart companies are actually getting their house in order, getting these strategies done now, so they are in a position to take advantage, if you like, of of their competitors who falter. And you can either be one of those that benefits from that, um, or, or 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 the other. Uh, I certainly know which one. Uh, which one I'd rather be, and uh, and you, yeah. you're in a more commanding position. And I guess this leads us into what we're going to talk about next time, because to be in that position, obviously, mm. you've got to uh, be in a in a good financial position. You've got to have all your your, your books in order. You're not got to be carrying too much debt. You know, you've got to have paid mm. down as much of that as you possibly can, so that uh, when you're going to get some finance to to fund an acquisition like this, people are going to say yes to you. Mm. That's right, and. Uh, you can get the strategy right, but without the right capital structure, um, you can't execute it. Right. What a segue. Well, look, we'll, we'll talk about that next time we, uh, next time we meet. Uh, good to talk for the moment. Thank you, Michael. Cheers, Phil. Look forward to it.